So welcome to Sitka's continuing training webinar, Purchasing Power, Improvements to Acquisitions. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the changes in acquisitions that we'll see when we upgrade uh, to Evergreen 311. Now, one caveat, we are still two months out from the upgrade. So there's probably going to be some minor differences between we, what we look at today um, and what you see in October after the upgrade. Uh, we're gonna make sure that any significant changes uh, are documented. The Evergreen Community Development Initiative, of which the co-op is a member, has contracted the Equinox Open Library Initiative uh, to do a significant amount of angularization of the acquisitions module. Uh, Angular is the new code that Evergreen's written in. Uh, there have been significant contributions uh, to the angularization and further development of the acquisitions module uh, by staff at both Pines in Georgia and King County Library System in Washington as well. Um, and in 2021 with 3.7, we got updated general search as well as the provider's admin interfaces. In 2022, we got 3.9, or sorry, with 3.9, we got updated claiming funds and other administrative interfaces. And I've got those here on this uh, slide for us. And now with 311, which we'll have in October, we're going to see updated interfaces for view place order, load mark order records, selection lists, purchase orders, uh, line items, as well as a few other changes. So as you can see, uh, there's quite a few things on that list and some of them are pieces that you probably use on a very regular basis. And I'm just gonna come out of my slideshow here. And if you come to our website, go to Sitka under support and go to the 311 preview, which is currently just for the acquisitions module, but in September, we'll be adding information for the other parts of Evergreen to this page as well. Um, we do have a list here of uh, what you can expect to see change. So now we're gonna switch over to Evergreen and look at some of the changes and the new features. So the very first thing uh, to highlight is that we have two new library settings coming. Uh, one is this default owning library for auto-created line items. And the other is how to set default owning library for auto-created line items. Now these two settings work together and what they actually mean and do is that if you are creating purchase orders um, where you're not loading the holdings information, so for example, if your order or your library orders from Amazon or Indigo um, and you're manually creating those purchase orders, if you've told Evergreen that your Amazon or Indigo provider should automatically create a certain number of copies, this tells uh, Evergreen what to do with the owning library. So for example, what I have here is I've told it to use the setting. So it's going to automatically give the owning library to those uh, line items that it creates as MPL, which is Maple Public Library here on our training server, um, which works uh, well for those of you who are single branch. Um, those of you who are multi-branch, though, you have some additional options because you don't always want um, all of your line items to have the same owning library assigned. Uh, so you now also have the option to set workstation. Um, so whatever workstation the person is logged into will be assigned or will be assigned as the owning library. Um, and you can also tell it to leave it blank, which is the current behavior. Um, so if your uh, staff need to manually go through and pick the owning library because they're ordering for multiple branches, um, or if you're using distribution formulas um, because you are ordering for multiple branches. Um, so a couple settings here that are potentially going to eliminate a few uh, clicks. Now, a little more exciting than new library settings 
we're going to come here to acquisitions and load mark order records. Now, any of you who load uh, files from vendors uh, probably use this screen on a fairly regular basis, and you'll notice that it looks quite a bit different than it currently does. It works the same as it did before, though. Um, so even though it looks different, everything on it is the same, except at the very top here, we have this apply create form template. So you can now create templates for your different providers. So if I choose from the drop down menu, my fictional provider, it's going to fill in all of that information for me, uh, including who the provider is. Uh, if you are including fiscal year in your templates, you'll want to make sure that you uh, change that as your fiscal year uh, changes. Um, and if from the drop down menu, I choose my other uh, template here, you can see I've got a couple different values because I've got a different record source, currently have a different fiscal year and that different provider. Um, so handy and also very easy to create. So all you need to do is fill in the uh, values that you want into the different fields. And we'll just uh, choose a different one here. Put in a name for your template and click Save Template. And you can also, we're going to go with fictional provider today, um, but you can mark that template as your default so that it automatically is there uh, when you open up the interface. Uh, from my testing, uh, the templates are saved on the workstation. Um, so anybody using the same workstation uh, should have access to these templates. So I've got my provider, my order agency uh, filled in. Um, you do wanna always double check your fiscal year. Uh, there is a bug where if you switch your ordering agency, which uh, I'm not able to do, but if you're a multi-branch, uh, you can do it, or if you hadn't filled it in, um, it will flip back to the current calendar year. And if you're one of the libraries that straddles the calendar year, um, it can flip back to a year that you're not expecting. Um, so we've reported that as a bug, but do make sure you're double checking your fiscal year is the correct fiscal year um, before uploading your file. Um, so I'm going to uh, put in my Q number, uh, sorry, Q name. Um, and you probably don't want to include your Q as part of the template because you want to use a different Q for each order that you load. And now I'm going to choose my file. And you can see now that I've chosen my file, the upload button is a darker green because all of the required information has now been entered. And I'm going to click Upload. And usually we get a bit more information here with the processing than you're currently seeing uh, on the current interface. Um, I will say that we have confirmed that the timeout bug is still present. So if your load doesn't appear to finish processing, don't upload your file again. Search for the pending purchase orders because it's probably there. Um, I've only been able to replicate that once. So my hope is that it's less of an issue, um, but we have seen it. So do be aware that that's uh, still something to watch for. So I'm gonna go to my purchase order. And you'll see that the purchase order looks quite a bit different. Um, and this really is where the biggest change is. Um, it's a new looking interface, which based on my testing so far does seem to load faster. Um, the functionality is all still there, but in some cases it's in different places than where you're used to seeing it. Some of the really significant changes, the information here at the top has been rearranged. Um, but it's all still there, uh, except the split order by line items function, which uh, nobody really seemed to know what to do with it. 
so that function has been uh, removed. Uh, some actions that used to be in the actions menu, like print and history, are now included here um, in this purchase order summary as opposed to in the actions menu. So you can see looks a little bit different, but the information and the options are all still there. If we look at the line items, we've got a few changes here. Uh, one of the ones that's currently being discussed in the community um, is the fact that the checkbox has moved to be on the other side of the um, cover art. Um, and the consensus so far in the community um, is that we, we think it should still be here because it's kind of buried in the line item. Uh, so there is a bug and discussion going on about that. Um, I suspect we won't see any changes before we uh, upgrade in October. Um, so be aware that that checkbox has moved and isn't quite where you might expect to see it. Um, you do have some options though for checking. Instead of just selecting all, you have the option to select all your line items in the page or all of your line items, which brings me over to the fact that you can pick how many rows display and you can page between pages. Um, now, you do have the ability to display 10,000 rows. We don't recommend loading a purchase order with 10,000 line items on it. Um, but you do have the ability to uh, adjust that. Um, and as I said, just either select all your line items or just the ones that are visible on the page to you. Um, and also in this area is something that I know uh, has been desired for some time, and that is filter and sort options. So you now have the ability to filter by different information, including title. Um, so if we wanted to Oh, and I got to do the exact title there. So it does have to be the exact title, but you can filter by title. And you also have the ability to sort by a number of different options, including title, author, and publisher. Um, so I know that that's functionality uh, that has been wanted for some time and hopefully will make purchase orders easier to work with. Um, so if we wanna switch it here to our title ascending, now we have our titles in alphabetical order. Um, and it is including the filing characters as part of uh, that alphabetical. Uh, one of the other big changes is that under the actions menu is now where you're gonna find the batch updater. Um, so you can see the batch update items on selected line items option. Um, and we're gonna look at that uh, in just a moment. Um, also on the actions menu, you'll see um, the actions have been rearranged a little bit, um, but all of the expected actions are still there, except the ones, um, as I mentioned earlier, that have been pulled out and added to the purchase order summary. Um, one thing that took me a moment to figure out, so I wanna highlight, um, is you still have the expand all option, um, but it's it doesn't it's not the word expand all anymore. Um, it's this little icon here. So that will expand all on your purchase order. And you can also collapse all. Um, and you can see you've got the expand with the icon as well as the collapse on the individual line items. The line items themselves look different, but they have the same functionality they did before. Um, you've got a few options under your actions menu there. You have your price field. You have the ability to uh, choose your ISBN and enter additional ones, um, as well as your different options uh, that are linked to here, um, including notes and alerts. And notes and alerts now opens within the purchase order. 
Um, so you can see here, you can add a note or you can add an alert. Uh, there is a bug right now with alerts where it's got a duplicated uh, drop down here. Um, I'm optimistic that we'll have that removed before the upgrade. Um, it looks like uh, something just got copied and pasted by mistake. Um, the one bug that we are not sure will be resolved before the upgrade is that the alert type dropdown is currently showing the alert types for the entire consortium. Um, so if this bug isn't resolved before the upgrade, what we're going to be doing is going in to all of your alert types and adding an underscore with your library code to the end of it so that you can tell which alert codes are yours. Um, we have uh, submitted that as a bug. Um, I just don't know that it'll be resolved before October. Um, so if we wanted to add an alert here, and I'll just hit create alert, and you can see I now have an alert at the bottom, and I've got that flag displaying on the line item. Uh, another thing that we've put in as a bug um, is that to close this expanded notes and alerts, um, you have to hit this little red X. Um, and ideally, we think that should be a more prominent button that's more obvious that it applies to the entire section. Um, so you just hit close to close that notes and alerts. If I take us across here to worksheet, um, there's not a lot on here because we haven't uh, put, any, put much information in. Um, one thing we are currently working on and are hopeful uh, that we'll have uh, working is the ability for the template for your worksheet to be adjusted so that instead of this uh, grid, it prints out the different copy information in a bulleted list so it can be printed on a receipt printer instead of needing a printer with eight and a half by 11 paper. Uh, so we'll have confirmation on that closer to uh, the upgrade, um, but uh, we've been hard at work adjusting that template to see if we can get it uh, so that it can print on the receipt printer. So I'm just gonna hit return to go back to the purchase order. Um, and that is the purchase order and the line items on the purchase order. Um, as I said, there's a few other features that we're gonna look at uh, with a couple different examples, um, but are there any questions about anything that I have shown so far? Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, acquisitions and the purchase order search because I want to pull up an existing purchase order that I created. And I'm, I don't have very many purchase orders on uh, this server, so I'm just going to do a search for all of them. And we're going to pull up this purchase order seven. So this is one that I've created manually as opposed to loading a file from a vendor. Um, so if we do expand all, you can see that I don't have information yet. Um, so I'll want to add that using the batch loader. So what I'll want to do um, first, though, is I have a couple other items to add. So I'm going to go to actions and add brief record. And you'll see the brief record form here has been updated as well. And I'm just going to put in my information. and add that record. So completely the same functionality, just looks better. So we now have that one on our purchase order. Um, and I'm also going to add one from the catalog. So I'm gonna uh, go into catalog and search the catalog. And I'm searching the entire consortium 
and I'm going to do a search by ISBN. And here's my item. So we already have it in the system. I want to add that to my purchase order. I'm going to go into the item, or, sorry, the record summary and uh, other under other actions, I'm gonna choose view place orders. And here you can see the view place orders interface has also been updated. Um, we've got the record summary at the top with information about the item, which is really quite useful. And you've got nice buttons here to either create a selection list, add to a selection list, create a purchase order or add to a purchase order. Uh, now, one thing I found in testing so far is that the drop down menus for add to selection list and add to purchase orders aren't dropping down as expected. But if you start typing in uh, your purchase order name or your selection order name, uh, sorry, or selection list name, uh, it'll have that drop down for you. So we're going to add this to purchase order seven and apply. And it's going to open that up and you can see that we've now added this to purchase order seven. Um, now, uh, we have all of them on here, but again, we need to add the information. Um, and I, before we add the information though, I'm going to expand this one here, because you can see that this one has the owning library already set to Maple Library. And that's because of those library settings that I showed at the uh, beginning. Um, the other ones on this purchase order don't have that um, because I made changes to the provider after creating the purchase order initially. Um, but if you have the settings set up before you create your purchase orders and start adding things to them, uh, it does apply that. But now we want to apply uh, to everything. So I'm going to choose all line items. And from the actions menu, I'm going to choose batch update items on selected line items. So I'm going to say I want an item count of one for everything. My owning branch is going to be maple. My shelving location is going to be on order. I just need to find that in the list. There we go. Um, my fund is going to be adult fiction. Um, and I can put a circulation modifier in if I want. I'm not going to in this case. And then go batch update. And then I'm going to look at this and go, hang on a second. Uh, I've got a couple nonfiction here. So I'm going to deselect everything so I can choose my beekeeping one and the wager and go back in batch update here, and I'm just going to change that fund to adult nonfiction, and then do my batch update. So I've now added everything that's needed. I can expand to see that I have uh, the funds and the different funds applied to all of my items. Uh, now I just need some prices, and I am going to add uh, very fake prices here. Um, so that we have those in there so that we can activate this. And up at the top, you can see it's thinking about uh, the status of the purchase order. We have a pending activatable purchase order. Our estimated amount is $136. And we're going to click activate order. And now you can see we, because these were uh, loaded or created as brief records, we need to load them into the catalog. And you have the ability to apply those templates that you created back on the load mark order record screen. So we're gonna choose fake provider for this one because it's uh, a different uh, set of uh, records than the one I was using before. And I'm going to create my Q name. And we're going to submit. And it'll take a moment as it loads uh, those records into the catalog.
And now we have an on order purchase order. Um, and as you can see, it does seem faster to me. Um, you work with these much more. So do let me know if it also seems faster to you um, or not. Um, so we have them all on order now. And uh, when the items arrive, we can receive them through the purchase order. We can still receive them through the uh, invoice as well um, as you currently do. And as well, if we switch over here to the search, you can now re receive line items through the line item search. So all of these actions that used to be available in the old uh, search have returned. Um, you can see you can do things like apply a claim policy, add to purchase orders, create invoices, uh, delete line items, uh, mark line items as received, unreceived line items. Um, so especially if you are needing to uh, cancel line items based on a particular search criteria or receive them, uh, you can now bring those up and perform those batch items uh, on those line items again. Um, because the ones I've pulled up here are pending order, uh, we won't actually change those. But if we pull up my current purchase order, I'm just checking, let's do seven here. So now we have all the line items for purchase order seven and we could say, okay, these two actually need to be canceled. Uh, already owned, apply. So we've now got those two as canceled and maybe this one and this one are ready to be received. So we can mark those ones as received. Uh, so very handy that you can now do that uh, through the search as opposed to only be able to do it uh, through the purchase order. Now, the one other thing that has changed Oh, sorry, I have a question. Uh, do libraries use this to just have accurate funds information? We only use uh, FreeLS, White Hots, EDI. If I ever order from Indigo, I just add holdings on those books. Um, so it really depends on uh, what, you, what you need acquisitions to do for you. Um, some libraries do use it for uh, calculating their uh, their funds um, and how much they have left to spend for different collections. Uh, some libraries use it more for uh, keeping track of what they're ordering from uh, their larger vendors. Uh, so it really depends on uh, what you need acquisitions to do for you. So the one other piece that has changed substantially um, which I'm going to show, but I'm not sure that we actually have anyone using it. We, I think we have one library that's maybe using it, um, is selection lists. Um, and it's going to give me an error there. There we go. Um, so the selection list interface has been updated um, into the new Angular code um, as well. So if we go into my September hot picks, Um, you can see the line items look the same as they do or close to the same as they do in the purchase order. Uh, there's some information that's not included there yet because it's not relevant. Um, we have the sort and filter options, the same uh, ability to select, uh, the same actions menu, though, of course, only the actions that can actually be done to line items on a selection list uh, are available. Um, and we have our expand and uh, contract as well. Um, so uh, it does look uh, much nicer. Um, and as with the other Angular interfaces, as I said, it does seem uh, to open uh, faster. 
Uh, so those are all the bits of acquisitions that we know are changing. Um, as I mentioned, there may be some other things that come up as we continue to test. Uh, we're almost two months out from the upgrade. So what we see today might not be exactly what you're gonna see on the 23rd of October. Um, but since some really critical parts of acquisitions look quite different, um, we wanted to give you the chance to see what's coming um, and prepare staff as needed, um, be ready for things to function the same, but look different and to have to go to different places for some of those buttons and checkboxes and actions. Um, so thank you for joining me for the webinar today, and I'm going to stop the recording.